Jaden Show, and here's your host, Jaden Cornelius. Happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome to my show. I'm super excited to be with you today because I have a wonderful show in store for you. I am going to be heading all the way to the beautiful London, England to meet Russian composer, the amazing Olga Thomas, and she'll be telling you about how she met the Queen and how she has been composing um, songs and music for the royal family and for the different occasions of the royals in England over the last few years and how she has had so many number one singles on the classical chart. She's a phenomenal artist and such a beautiful, beautiful lady. You are going to really love this show. Let, I think, let's go and see a little bit of Olga in action. You have heard some of her music, now let's go and meet the lady behind those fingers of gold. This week's very special guest, the amazing Olga Thomas. Olga Thomas, welcome to The Jaden Show. Thank you very much for inviting me, delighted to be here. I'm so delighted you're on my show, we've just seen your show reel, oh my goodness. Not only beautiful, beautiful music, but royalty. What's all the Queen of Symphony? I mean, look, the one Queen meeting another. This is amazing. Like, you really have worked with everybody. I mean, it's just, you know, amazing. Born in Moscow. How long have you lived in London for now? I've lived in London since 1990, so it will be 33 years. Wow, amazing. And, and, and do you love London? It is my home and wow. I love it more than anything else on earth. Whenever I land in London or I sail sometimes from America, the moment I come to England and then London, I am totally delighted. I know it is home and my piece called Flowers on the Doorstep, which you can see the background wow. from that. This, it is about my love for London, and it was got uh, classical number one uh, in the charts, yes. So yeah, I know, we're going we to talk, yeah. you've worked with some amazing people, but you London, started, love it. London, love it, I love that, my flag, I might be living in Mexico, but I'm still, you, I'm still a Brit boy. Yes. Now, you had your first concert at eight years old, so what was that, 20 years ago? I would say, yeah, 20 years, Me maybe too. plus VAT, plus VAT, <laughs> in current rate. <laughs> but your first concert at eight years old, I mean, this is amazing. Like, 
how did your love for music and you know were you encouraged by your family how did it all start for you i am from uh, i'm very lucky to be um born in a very musical family my ancestors are very very special distinguished musicians so one of them uh, was uh, uh, in the states uh, found of, um, of uh, eastman school of music Rochester university one of the founding professors uh, berlin and he was a principal for Bernstein, uh, London. Um, so it was uh, Boston Symphony Orchestra. But what I found out that he was for 10 years uh, in London Philharmonic and I never had to know him. He was my great uncle. My grand, great aunt was uh, from Warsaw Conservatory, piano play. Another great uncle, principal cellist in Moscow in Bolshoi. Uh, so um, another violinist very very distinguished so family of musicians and inventors they were also inventors and i think i combined both of them being a composer wow. which inventors part and musician yeah so it's your dna and your blood and you can even escape if you wanted to I think I wouldn't be able to stop, and it is uh, something. When I was uh, a child, I, my mom was studying while I was already in existence, and she was playing very often, practicing in the evening. And I was unusual child, and giving scare to my um, parents and grandparents because every evening I was insisting that I want to go to bed, which is absolutely. Not normal for a little child. I should resist. <laughs> I should have been resisting. But my secret was I knew once I go to bed, mom will start practicing. And then I go into this wow. amazing wonderful world of listening to her playing. And so I really I, I gave my as you said, I gave my concert when I was eight, but I composed my first piece when I was five. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. And it was a proper piece because Many, many years later, I used it for um, for the production of the Cherry Orchard for West End by Bill Kenwright. I used it as one of the late motifs because it was absolutely normal piece for, for that. I wish I've done, been five years old, but I never oh told anybody goodness. when I've done it. I had to pretend I worked very hard composing it, but really it was when I was with one finger, I couldn't play, but I could <laughs> compose it. I'm composing all my life since I remember myself. I always joke that I have some background application running in my brain which constantly compose whatever it is compose, that's amazing <laughs> yeah. can, can people buy that app <laughs> well i think it is something which could be which could be just uh, you know i'm sure there are a lot of people who are like that it's just i don't know anybody because i don't know so many you know people might I, I, in all honesty them. i've never met anyone i mean i met some phenomenally <laughs> talented people but no, no that is Composing yeah. music. Yeah. No. yeah, no, it is just sometimes absolutely, but I can do it while talking to you. I don't need to go into this composer state, retreat, oh, oh yes, I'm, oh, sorry, leave me alone. I, I can do it. Um, quite a funny example was when, speaking of Devon, I was learning there to drive okay. uh, because yes. it was the only way where I could give my time and attention been not been distracted and uh, um, you know just to be totally i booked one week in devon to learn to drive totally de dedicated to that and while i was learning to drive i was driving my driving instructor insane up the wall <laughs> because i was constantly composing whatever i saw uh, i immediately started stop composing you have your <laughs> test yeah, coming yeah. and i was composing my one of the pieces which came out of my learning to drive that is about background application uh, was composed as a joke about roundabout it's called roundabout walls because i couldn't exit roundabout and <laughs> listen it and i thought it is very good joke when you think it is the end and then apparently it is the beginning of next part and this was <laughs> and it was so hilariously funny that was the first piece which uh, the actor who played Columba, late Peter Falk, heard, and I called it for him, just one more thing, because it was as appropriate as roundabout. When you thought it is the end, uh, it is the beginning, and he's coming back, just one more thing. So, And that, that made him laugh so much, and <laughs> that was my first piece for him, which is called. Wow. Um, so my roundabout walls became just one more thing. 
amazing <laughs> amazing like really i'm not saying that just because you're on my show but you are an, an immense talent your music is is off the scale beautiful i mean it really really is very very beautiful i feel very honored that it you're, means so uh, much to me thank you so no, much you're, just... such a, you're such a good lady as well like you've got so, you know you're just such a beautiful energy so i really am very grateful that we're, we're able to introduce you to my world and my world to you that's really really cool Wonderful. but it's not Thank just you. about doing that i know maybe Jaden, the Jaden show might be one of the highlights of your career but you've done compositions you've composed for film for tv and not only different famous people but f for the royal family and the queen how it's did that happen Honor. It's such a great honor, it is, and my memories of doing it now is particularly special. I'm talking about Rebecca Bus Pimples, absolutely, because absolutely. after Her Majesty is gone, but she's never gone really, she's always with us in some way, but once she's uh, not with us in her previous form, <laughs> uh, then um, I, I cherish it even more it's very special memory so i was always um, um very very you know held the royal family very close to my heart being in russia being from russia in russia royal family was executed as you know including innocent children including because that was the idea of um, you know politics that nobody can stay alive from the royal family what if uh, what if they come back into power so everybody including little boy teenage girls they all had to be executed wow. and shot and i was always completely shocked with that story because we had to learn about it at school and we had to think not to i think they wanted us to think but they were forcing us whether we thought or not to say that it is okay it's normal it's tough but it is reasonable because what if somebody is alive then somebody will want to bring back royalty and for me it was such a shock and screaming unfairness and I since then really felt about royal family not just an admiration but I felt uh, this protective thing wow. that's why you know I'm I'm a, a patron art patron of uh, the monarchists because for me monarchy means a lot I think it is stability and it is something which is a very good way of controlling um, people who could be politicians because even if it is impartial it is absolutely beautiful idea that our head of state is the queen uh, was the queen now yeah. the king but it is royalty head of state and whatever it is whoever politically around the country there prime minister just one of the ministers it's so much better in my mind than president because yeah. that is something which controls psychologically at least and uh, from that absolute feeling of uh, feeling good i think it is a good idea i really love the um, idea of having royalties as head mm -hmm. yeah so i loved our royal family since i was a child i was fascinated by them i knew the history of russian royal family so when i came here i uh, never thought that it would be possible to do that but what happened when um, the queen mother died uh, my friends knowing how much i was fond of her they asked me to write this in her memory and i said and whom for it is and they said for you to express your love for a lady wow, and i wrote the piece it was my first piece uh, which mm, i never knew would be presented to her majesty and will wow. start the beginning of this amazing tradition it was mm, called themes of life and glory wow. and I go when this piece was um, and what happened uh, my friend um, was uh, a trustee one of many trustees of cruise bereavement then care now support cruise bereavement support charity beautiful charity which i would say for everyone because we're all at some stage will have to come against this horrible experience but unavoidable if we are normal people we will experience bereavement in Absolutely. our life so that's why i say this charity is for everyone and they're wonderful and um their patron royal patron was Her Majesty for many years, and uh, they had the uh, jubilee coming. And for that jubilee, I think 
was yeah golden jubilee of that organization it was 2009 and they want they were invited to um, celebrate this amazing event uh, at st james's palace being hosted by her majesty as the royal patron and uh, they wanted to present some gift to her majesty and they were thinking what it should be it should be this, that and my friend told me that she suggested that it should be a gift of music because wow. her majesty would have everything and she said my uh, that her friend me had a piece of music written for the memory of the queen mother and maybe that would be appropriate like cross bereavement support and uh, uh, so this piece was played and they all were somebody was in tears and uh, when i was told about it i always think i think it's a good quality to be modest and i think do you think they really meant it and she yeah. said oh they, they were in tears and um so they decided to present it as a gift as an official gift and they sent it to the palace for approval it was approved um as an official gift but i didn't ever imagine that i will be the one who will be presenting it and then they asked me to pre prepare arrangements for harp some of my other pieces five pieces and they were played in st james's palace and I was invited there and I didn't know that it would be me who would be given this CD. Um, and um, when I was invited there, only then they told me and they very quickly taught me how to do the, you know, the etiquette. And uh, um, then our meeting took place and I gave the CD. It was my first one and it was very special, unforgettable experience. As I said, the smile of our late queen she was lighting up the place it was glow and you felt being interrupted this very special glow and wow. uh, since then i started composing for every event to commemorate the most important events in the life of the royal family like weddings children's birth uh, you know birthdays of prince george and uh, princess charlotte and um, then maybe arching and all, all all of them and both weddings uh, royal hollywood uh, was for uh, Meghan markle and uh, prince harry um the royal um, then it was uh, a celebration for uh, current uh, uh, prince and princesses of wales then uh, the other way yes yeah, so prince william and uh, Kate Middleton, wow. yeah. So yeah, Cambridge is then and now Wales. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, yes, and for every event, all these pieces are put together on the one album which I released um, for this jubilee. It was released on the jubilee weekend on the fourth of uh, June for of official birthday weekend and it it was absolutely special for me because it includes all my royal pieces uh, under one cover and that is if one can i will try to find it okay i don't think we can do it or my people maybe yes. hold it. Uh, there is a say yeah 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 wow beautiful yeah yes it is uh, Royal Platinum Jubilee celebration with Olga Thomas, and that was so, I was so privileged. It was featured on uh, Sky News from Buckingham Palace, where I was given an interview. So it, it is uh, it's very special for me to have this wow. like, released and to have, while, while Her Majesty was still with us. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. I, I know because obviously I'm not a composer, but I've written quite a few songs and. I know sometimes the, the journeys of our life feed the ingredients for our music. You know, they give us the ingredients for, you know, yeah. how we how we manifest mm -hmm. ourselves through our art, yes. through our creation. Now, but I also yes. know that sometimes, you know, like sadness and grief and bereavement can also can also suppress that creativity and that spark as well. Mm -hmm. when, when when the queen passed, knowing your love for the queen and the royal family, how did that affect you creatively? When the queen passed, I put um, my um, I put my cre creativity into doing another uh, memorial piece for Her Majesty, which is called Her Platinum Crown. 
Wow, okay, beautiful. Now, that is my latest piece, and I thought I wanted it to be a celebration of life. It is serious. It is, you know, majestic, solemnized, but um, it is not a funeral march. It is a celebration of life piece, which with a very strong, positive feeling and feeling of eternity. So her platinum crown, uh, because it is single, it is not in the CD format. Uh, that's why you can find it everywhere on the um, on uh, all the digital shops. Like Spotify you, uh, and all the streaming. Yes, all, everywhere. And I, because it happened so suddenly this time, I really, um, I wanted just to release it straight away. So I didn't have any campaign, any pre-order, just I put it on straight away and released. So I, I said, because prior to that I had four number one consecutive in the charts. I said this time I absolutely don't even don't want to know about the charts because um, it, is, it is just for my personal because for charts you need to have at least two weeks, you know, people have to know about it. Yeah. And I just released it uh, straight away once. I written it, I put it like the day before the release uh, to get and when I woke up I saw that it was number three. Wow. In the chat, so Amazing. I couldn't believe it because, yeah, that's pure instrumental piece, and it is uh, for me very special because uh, I, I did it this way, but I started it as a memorial piece for Queen Mother, so mm -hmm. it is a bereavement. Uh, in my case, I do it as a celebration of life, and uh, for me, it's very close the con concept of cruise which is not to leave people who died behind, but somehow in different understanding emotionally how some people are believers, some people are not, but to find the way to take them with you, with you on your life journey. And to so that is in your memory, through your yeah. beliefs, whatever it is. So yeah. that is what I always try to do. If it is something yeah. memorial... Yeah, that's am it's amazing therapy as well. How did you get involved with um, with cruise bereavement support? Uh, through my friend who was trustee there, and first she just um, introduced my piece, and that went this way. And I we thought it would be one off, but then I became the resident composer because I love doing uh, something which will leave a real something not uh, that is the legacy which i want to leave if yeah. i'm going oh, I completely understand this that. very moment i know i've done something and yeah. that is a great feeling which makes you feel much more positive about Absolutely. everything about yeah, all life you know horrible situations and pain which we have to go through seeing what's happening but if you know you've done something Absolutely. and it is something you can leave and feel you are ready anytime to leave or or not to leave, yeah. but you've done it. So um, I just found that for me it is very appropriate organization because uh, I, um, for me, bereavement was very important and defined me as I was very close with my lovely mom whom I was listening playing when I was three years old and wanted to go to bed. Uh, but uh, what happened, we were very close and she died when I was 28. Wow. And then I left. Uh, for England, it was absolute wonderful um, situation because I, I I was in a completely different world uh, where I met my husband and we are married over 30 years, been very happy and uh, it means, you know, a lot to me. I'm traditional, old-fashioned in that respect. And uh, when I was always, you know, been an only child and been so close um, with my mother, I could not believe that I will be able to exist to continue without her and i had to learn all that through my own experience how to carry on how to keep going how to find the way not to uh, artificially fulfill this yeah. whole this vacuum which is forever but how or to, to capsize with that whole yeah to make this whole absolutely wonderful place which yeah. is part of me i wouldn't want to be what i was before she died <laughs> because no, it is different i understand but that. Good. so you can relate yeah. to that that is why for me bereavement organization which helps people i couldn't have any help because it didn't exist there yeah, uh, yeah. but when i found her, uh, such an 
organization, such charity, which can help people to go through that. I thought it is definitely for oh, no, me absolutely. and what can help with the music. It's wonderful. It's perfect. I, I, my father died on my 21st birthday and mm, he was so my world. He was a beautiful, was. beautiful man. And I so I had to deal with my unbelievable pain. Never imagined how painful that would be to lose a parent. Like unbelievable. unbelievable. And, um, and, and um, people still think, um, especially my mum, who I love desperately with my whole life, like she thinks I'm a little bit weird now because I have a screensaver on my computer, and that screensaver, there's no like, there's no X's, there's nothing. It just is pure photos of nature, pets, places I've visited, the beautiful people that I've met, my family and my friends. People, it's a, it's a screensaver of love, and in there are lots of dead people. Funnily enough. But that's still part of my, that just as important to me and still it's part so of my day as my pet or my mum or my, you know, like, yeah. they're still part of who I am because they... Of course. You know, sometimes it gets a bit, sometimes I'll be in a bit of a low mood and my gran or my dad would will be on this and, and I'll be like, oh, okay, but I know you're with me, like, you know, we're doing this together, yes. you know, but so yes. sometimes you still, because grief is a never-ending experience. It just is yeah. a, it's a completely it's a forever changing experience how you adapt to that to that whole you know yeah. is you know you adapt and like you can be 15 years down the line and one day it felt like it happened yesterday and that pain is raw yes. and then yes. you can yes. I, I remember one day listening to a song on the radio i think it was something like toto by africa something really random that mm -hmm. i wouldn't normally mm -hmm. listen to it just came on the radio and i was glossing my doors and for in that second, the smell of the gloss and that mm -hmm. song took me back to 1980 yeah. or something when mm -hmm. my dad was glossing the radiators in our living room in London. And in that moment, the pain was intense and so random. Like you, there's yeah. still things, but you learn to adapt. And you learn to adapt. It. And what you rightly said, those two feelings in my mm. experience, smell and music, they are most able to be evocative in this bringing oh, back and touch moment. They, it is, it is a time machine. Those are yeah. in ancient for the time machine, those two things. And I know it so well, even again, talking, you see, yeah, me too. yeah straight away, because that is that. No, it is, I, uh, once when I had my first loss and my friend told me one day, you cannot imagine what that it is not what's happening now but one day you will have memories not like heartbreaking but with a plus as a Absolutely. positive Absolutely. and i couldn't believe i catch myself i remember something and subconsciously i'm smiling i can even about something this memory it is yeah. not breaking my heart you can have some and then everything is for a few moments but generally memories become not heartbreaking but heartwarming I absolutely say. absolutely i've actually lost in the last two and a half months i've lost nine people that i know in two and a half months and oh. um and it really and you know like so like the 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 charities and the you know people say oh no therapy is not for me and stuff like this the minute my father died i put myself into therapy straight away because i didn't want to deal with it 30 years later i wanted to get through that and deal with it then right. and at the time there wasn't any charities that were supportive of that situation so therapy was the only real route and everyone said i was crazy you don't need it you you know toughen up you'll get through it but actually no it's crazy but it is something that we one of the um the most unfortunate things about being um alive is the fact that the only thing guaranteed is everyone's going to die including us <laughs> and like yourself like me you know we're animal lovers and you know and those beautiful angels that come into our life and they pass away too young as well you know we're always dealing yeah. with so it's finding the positives and the strength you to be able to to, to, to you get have people. to yeah. absolutely and speaking of lovely animals what you said i always tell people when they are heartbroken say never again i said that is wrong yeah. don't think of yourself Think of them. Absolutely. So many of them need a home. Think of people who adopt 
pets who are 11, 12 years old, ill, yeah. who have little to live to give them few, enjoy that, what you are doing for them. It's not about you, sorry. Yeah. It is about them. And so many of them we, who need home. And that yeah. it helps. Yeah. yeah, People see it differently. They don't see it as, you know, it is betrayal. Nobody. It's not about replacement. It is to give home to somebody who needs it. And it's, unco and it's unconditional. I mean, I've got like, as you know, from our early conversations, I've got 12 dogs and 10 cats. And one of my little dogs, his name's Hush, is a 11 year old, nearly 12 year old poodle. And he's not very good at the moment. He's going blind. And But when I give him cuddles and put him on my bed, he's rescued. He was, you know, quite mal maltreated before. I have never seen elation and joy and happiness when he he's the only dog that I've ever allowed on my bed ever you know because he needed to be elevated within the pack and um, to see that elation to know that before you know however long he gets living it might not be too long that boy he felt and he experienced pure joy and love for me sometimes I think they leave us in order to make room for someone else who needs it it's a beautiful way of looking at it because they know it's my time. I'm okay. I'm ready to go over the bridge. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's just time for you to help somebody else who needs it more. And their unconditional love, it is oh, something yeah. which you would never experience from anybody in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I yeah. really, I'm really, you know, like, I'm so I applaud you with your work and and what you're doing with with Cruz as well because it, you know it's something that affects every single one of us worldwide. Of course. Yeah, <laughs> so, you know. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. I would say I always say unless you are sociopath, you will experience bereavement. Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah. well, I'm, I'm, I'm also going to put links to Cruz, um, you know, on the bottom of this of, of this interview as well. So people at home, if you are going through anything, if you're really struggling with bereavement. Or I, I also understand as well that, you know, sometimes, you know, with the current situation after COVID and things like that, I know I experience the fear of like the, f I live 9,000 kilometers away from my mum. You know, my mum is in her 70s. She's strong as a bloody ox. She's a wonderful, beautiful woman. Wow. But my fear of dealing with that future bereavement sometimes is intense, you know. Oh, like, I, I, and, can't I, you know I can't believe it. I can't believe it. So, yeah. you know, if anyone at home is going, if you're going through grief and sometimes it just hits you too hard and you don't know how to deal with it, cruise bereavement support are the, is where yes. you need to be heading first. So I suggest you follow the links that are being, you know, that are running underneath this interview that are also on the Facebook, oh, sorry, on the YouTube the yeah. credits as well. Please go and speak to them and please go and, you know, and, and try and get some, yeah, because it is something that we all go through, but it is yeah. something that we can we can lighten that burden to a certain degree, you know, a lot of the time. Um, Absolutely. I also want to talk to you as well, because one, as another lovely, lovely, lovely person that I've chatted to in one of my Jaden shows, the beautiful, the talented Joanna Forrest. You I have quite a connection with that lady as well, right? Oh, yes. She's my very special one. I call her Joanna from the Enchanted Forest. Really? That's how I call her, because she's so beautiful and she's so almost unreal it's like i always say like she came to us from disney film she just yeah, yeah, yeah. walked from the screen and enveloped us in her absolutely wonderful amazing voice and her loving nature she's very very special and you can see that we work a lot together yeah, we did amazing. royal platinum love song was our first one we did a christmas song that is his story then we did um uh, by my side which got like platinum love song it's all our number one classical charts then we did flowers on the doorstep it's another number one so which has this um cover cd which you see as a background yeah, yeah. so joanna forrest is very special she is absolutely beautiful person she has unique voice because this voice it doesn't penetrate it just takes you mm -hmm. in and envelops you that is and it is everywhere you feel like you are safely secure in you know covered by the blanket of love that's how i feel it that is her uh -huh. way for me and uh, she is 
um, as beautiful a singer as she is beautiful person That's from amazing. inside yes. and out. So I absolutely love working with her. How, how did you two meet? How, how was that that kind of association? Mm -hmm. I heard Joanna is doing, I think, Bedford proms. She did a duet with Daniel Cook, with okay. whom I recorded them. Uh, it, it was Robert Emery who recorded, but what I mean, <laughs> my piece was recorded by lovely Robert Emery uh, with Joanna and Daniel. I just decided that it is absolutely lovely combination, and they did for me Royal Platinum Love Song for a 70 years jubilee of late Her Majesty and late Prince Philip and wow. it was very special and uh, it we both talked with Joanna about it and we both agreed that um, then it was very special to celebrate such a special event but now it just feels like anyway their story is one of the most beautiful love stories of the 20th century story of their love. It is filmic. It is almost unreal, but it is real yeah. because that is really what they were. Yeah. And now it has different level for both. Joanna feels the same and I feel it's like they're somewhere else together on different levels. So it is yeah. very special thing. And this song is celebrating their love. And Joanna did absolutely beautiful job with Daniel Cook there. And then we worked to, uh, we did Christmas song uh, as, as, uh, that is his story again as a duet. And then she did all the solos for me. Sometimes I compose hearing her voice in my mind. You see, I have background application running, hearing voices, but I don't think I'm yet candidate for... You know. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, yeah. even if you are, it doesn't matter. You're creating magic, okay. so use it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, sometimes I, I remember when I composed in one of the pieces, I was, so I heard John, I thought, that is that. And I just was doing, when I was composing Royal Platinum, I was imagining how Joanna will be singing it. And sometimes I start a piece and I think that is Joanna. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Yes, it is. Oh. I'm very lucky to have it. And she's, she's, she's such a beautiful artist as well and such a, you know, yes. she's yes. great to chat yes. to as well. So, yeah, I, I, I need to be work, doing a collaboration with her one day in the future. I'd love to sing with that lady. Yes. She's absolutely beautiful. Wonderful, yes. Beautiful. Great. So going from working with Joanna Forrest, amazing amazing artist i need to ask you a really really random question the first question is do you have netflix uh, do i have netflix yeah yes okay so yes, my I mean, whether i have an application and netflix yeah. yes i do so you watch netflix so the crown comments please do you watch it are you looking forward to season five i am going to watch all of them because I saw bits and pieces. I think time came now to watch it and to start from the scratch because I saw bits and pieces. Or oh, actually, when I was in America, uh, and uh, I I think I need to start watching, and then I will be next in our next interview getting together. Let's call it catch up. I will yes. be able to tell you. Yes, fantastic. Yes. Yeah, because I. I didn't know whether I wanted to watch it, although yeah. the first actress, Emma, I can't remember, is it Foley, I think was the first mm -hmm. actress who played the Queen. Mm -hmm. Super love her. She's just such an amazing actress as well. And I kind of, so I thought, now nah, maybe I will watch it. And obviously I've moved away from England. So mm -hmm. now um, it's really quite interesting. When I was living in England, I had no desire for Downton Abbey, even though my friend done the, you know, the, the, the vocal theme tune for the movie. Mm -hmm. I still had no mm -hmm. real desire for Downton Abbey. It wasn't really my thing. I was more of a sci-fi kind of boy, really. Mm -hmm. moving, to in, moving to Mexico from England, oh, my mm -hmm. goodness, like completely obsessed by Downton Abbey. Yeah, and the crown. Hopefully totally share with you obsession with Downton Abbey totally and yeah so I imagine yeah <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's right yeah amazing mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. loved the crown phenomenal like just I didn't know how much they could put in that story of just a couple's relationship basically mm -hmm. yes but, but unbelievable like I was transfixed absolutely transfixed and now my partner who's never seen one 
now has to watch. We have we're now starting the whole series from the very first the whole episode. No, no, so we will do it together. We'll do it together. Uh, okay. Yeah, because I want to do the same just to start, and I think it would be very very interesting to to see because uh, if you liked Downton Abbey, that means that in some way. I trust your taste. I don't go into dogs and cats because that is something. But in films, it is very specific. And uh, uh, some people in films and TV serials could be completely different tests and, uh, tastes and still adore dogs. Yeah, it's a very disgust. Yes, yeah? But I think um, I would trust your taste because uh, the same feeling at first you felt a bit reluctant because you don't know what can be done. But it is amazing, yeah. The crown was excellent. The crown was yes, excellent. Definitely. Watch it. I will definitely watch it, yeah. Definitely mm -hmm. to watch it. And also going back to what you said you know a while ago about music being a time machine, it's been really interesting leaving my culture, my family, my friends, my climate, my language, and coming to a place where there is nothing here even remotely similar to any other part of my life was also on some level a bereavement saying goodbye to that old life completely, going through the stages of disbelief, excitement, depression, anger, all the things, all the stages that kind of you go through without the excitement, yes. the bereavement yeah. but of that in, immense change. And the only things I had left were my traditions and my music. And I found it really interesting how, you know, we were talking about, you know, when my dad was painting the radiator in, in the living room and stuff like that. But it's really interesting how, the only connection I have to who Jaden was before and my country and my family and my past is the music that I listen to. And that can take you directly back with good memories, bad memories, melancholy memories. I mean, you know, everything to that moment. It really is a magical experience. But I found it really quite interesting. I was I was a big fan of ABBA growing up. Like, I just wanted to ABBA? Yeah, yeah. ABBA. Yeah, I love ABBA. And yeah. um, one day I was thinking, oh, really, I really remember... I was singing from no age. I mean, my father recorded me at night. I was two years old and I was singing Knowing Me, Knowing You by ABBA with a microphone on his stereo in perfect pitch with ABBA. Mm -hmm. So, and, um, and I was just listening. I was having a day where I just wanted to go on YouTube and just watch everything ABBA because I needed <laughs> to go back to that place of security, mm -hmm. go back to that time when my father was alive, place. my grandmother was alive. Yes. Yes. And, I was, and all of a sudden, I was just watching all the old videos, and then I just heard there was these two old, older ladies, still very beautiful, but older ladies, and they started singing. I was like, oh, my God, they sound like ABBA. And they were. It was and and yet they yes, were And I was like, when did all that time go? When were? Yeah. <laughs> when did they lose their hot pants and their high heels, and now they're wearing, you know, tweed... <laughs> Swears. it's really interesting they still sound the same and you still know it's them but that years and years and years have gone by it's just crazy how mm, we get you. lost in it all yes. you know? it's amazing so what does the future hold for olga thomas what are your plans well i always uh, compose something so what i think i might do something uh, for Christmas, uh, because I compose pretty quickly, because I do compose pieces for Christmas. I have um, uh, one of my Christmas, um, uh, I have a Christmas album, like EP, I don't know whether I will manage to show it. Yes, so Royal Christmas with all okay. the yeah, yeah. Yes. so, uh, and uh, John is there on that album, yes, yeah, so. It is, uh, you know, my one of my Christmas songs. Uh, that is his story. It went very top in, uh, in official charts of all this. Wow. Yes, yeah, so very nice. I didn't didn't know. I discovered years after it happened, just some suddenly. So it was oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Amazing. So uh, yeah, I one of my um, piece which means a lot to me. It's. Uh, um, it's a Christmas song called Anna Domini, and it okay. is. Uh, it was on this album performed by Emily Haig, but also I have a video um, where it is performed live by Joanna Forrest. She also wow. loved the song and she wanted to, to do it, so it is one of uh, the videos. So, um, uh, and she performed it live on, on a couple of occasions, a big event. So, uh, I 
do like what I mean. I do like Christmas uh, music, which I composed yeah, yeah. in the past, and might do something. And what I definitely will do, I will be doing music uh, uh, for coronation because uh, that course. would be the best thing. Yeah. Because I have to make uh, you know make continuity of that. Yeah. So that my plan with the music. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And where can people find you on social media? My social media is uh, uh, Twitter, mm, uh, Instagram, Facebook page, uh, YouTube channel, uh, Spotify channel. I, I think I have them. Have them all. <laughs> okay. yes. So there's no excuse, people at home. You can find Olga Thomas everywhere. So I suggest you start looking and start finding out more about this young lady and her phenomenal work because you won't regret it. I hope that in the future... I know yes. I'm quite a way away from you, but maybe there can be an Olga and Jaden collaboration at some point. Well, that would be wonderful. It would be absolutely lovely. We might maybe get Joanna with us. We do some little Why bit. Why not? That would be amazing. <laughs> yes, no, I definitely. I love collaborations. I love lovely people, special like you are. Yes, oh, so uh, that would be wonderful, and I would love to do it. Yes. Well, it would be an honour for me to be able to to put my voice to one of your tracks. So. It would be wonderful and we'll do something for the charity and we Absolutely. will do it for animal charity. Once we both are so much uh, in love with animals yeah. and uh, I'm even called Puccini with double O. <laughs> Puccini and, what, uh, and uh, so, you know, like little hashtag is positive vibes with P. -A. Absolutely, absolutely. Positive. So we might do something and dedicate it to um, animal charity. I think it would be nice. Perfect. We'll do that. <laughs> Olga, I think you are absolutely amazing. You're such a beautiful human being. And I, was so, I feel so blessed to be able to know you. And I hope that you'll come and chat with me again. When, when you're, when, maybe even we can do another interview when the next single comes out, you know, for um, maybe the coronation or something when... We'll, we'll it would be lovely. I would really be delighted talking to you again. Thank you so much for inviting me. You are a very special person. Yes, and it is real pleasure and honor and privilege talking to you. And I really look forward to continue. Absolutely. I'll we'll be in touch for sure. People at home, as I said, please go and follow Olga. You would have seen throughout this interview all the links where you can find this lady and also how you can contact Cruise Bereavement Support as well. If you are suffering from the effects of losing someone you love very dearly, they are the people that you need to be speaking to. So please go and... And if you're, if you're in an okay bereaved state and you want to support them to support others... Also, go and please look at the ways that you can support them to support others as well. Olga Thomas, you are incredible. Thank you so much for being part of my show. I send you huge hugs and love from all my little ones in Mexico. Oh, and they're already looking for foxy faces. Hang on. He's already, he's down here. He's already told me that he's looking forward to meeting you. So well, I think that's it. I trust him, whoever he is. He's, he's perfect. Come. Oh, yes. So I think oh, he's already yes. looking forward my boys oh, yeah. will be looking forward to visit from Auntie Olga to the Caribbean. Well, Isn't that right? Babe? That would be absolutely wonderful. My pleasure and honor. Thank I really so. look forward to it and hugs to this lovely person. Absolutely, absolutely. And we will talk soon. Olga Thomas, thank you so much for being on the Jaden Show. We'll see you later. How amazing and how super lovely is that lady? I hope you have had a wonderful Jaden show. I know I've had a spectacular one. Really enjoyed myself today. She was super amazing to talk to. Please go and find her on her social media. Please go and check her out on Spotify. Download, stream, listen to her music. Super beautiful, super relaxing, amazingly talented and an amazing, lovely woman. Olga, thank you so much for being on my show. You kids at home, thank you for watching. Come back again next week. Make sure you have subscribed. Make sure you have clicked that little bell symbol so you know exactly when the next Jaden show is on air. Don't forget to follow me, Jaden Cornelius, on all my social media. And you can find my music, both pop and classical, on Spotify and other music download and streaming platforms. You're amazing. Thank you for spending some time with me this Sunday. I will see you next Sunday with another fantabulous edition of The Jaden Show. Take care. Stay beautiful.